wireless PC VR has come a long way, but which headsets actually offer the best performance, latency, and visuals? I'll be comparing the MetaQuest 3, the Quest 3S, Pico 4 Ultra, and the Play for Dream MR and give you a full breakdown. It's easy to get this wrong, so here's how I'm going to be testing these. I'll be using Virtual Desktop since it has the most comprehensive performance overlay. Every headset will be connected to a dedicated Wi-Fi 6E router, so no other devices in my house will interfere with the tests. And finally, since the resolution of each one is different, I'll match them as closely as possible directly within Steam VR. Now let's jump into testing arguably the most important aspect of wireless PC VR streaming, the latency. Last important thing before the numbers is that I'm also recording the footage you're about to see and that adds roughly 5 to 10 milliseconds of latency on every headset, but the resolution of the recording is the same on all of them so it's a fair comparison. Starting off with Aircar, the Quest 3 is getting a total latency of around 48 milliseconds, exactly the same as the Quest 3S. The Play for Dream, which is the only one with a better CPU, is slightly lower at 46 milliseconds but fluctuates a lot more with spikes up to 55. And my biggest surprise was the Pico 4 Ultra that is chilling around 35 milliseconds with occasional spikes up to 46, making it the easy winner in this category. Definitely not what I was expecting. Moving on to Half-Life Alex, here the Quest 3 was pretty bad at 49 milliseconds with spikes as high as 67 at times. The 3S did way better for some reason, comfortably hitting 38 to 39 milliseconds consistently. And that honestly threw me off because the 3S has the same chip. The Play for Dream was close to the Quest 3 at 46 milliseconds but with less fluctuations though it did at times spike to around 55. And once again, the Pico 4 Ultra shocked me with a whopping 35 milliseconds of latency. I mean, wow, it did spike to 45, 46 a couple of times, but overall a great score again for the Pico. Now, when it comes to wireless PC VR, a dedicated router is essential, and I've been using my current one for years, but it involved a lot of tweaking to get it right. Well, there's an easier way now, so let me quickly tell you about Prism XR, who are kindly sponsoring this segment. Their pop is S1 Lite router is the absolute easiest way I've ever tried for getting stable PC VR performance. There's no tinkering or headaches because it's as plug and play as it gets. It'll even perform a full scan that monitors your network in real time to help you quickly identify and resolve any issues, ensuring you always have a smooth, lag-free wireless PC VR experience. But here's the even cooler part. I know from the thousands of comments I got on my virtual desktop tutorial videos that a lot of you don't have a way to run a wire from your main router to your PC. And with this Prism XR Puppet router, guess what, you don't have to because it can connect to the internet via Wi-Fi while still maintaining a rock solid wired connection to your PC for flawless wireless PC VR. Prism XR also makes the Carina charging dock for the Quest 3 and 3S so that both your headset and controllers are always fully charged and ready to go whenever you want to jump in a game. Go check out Prism XR at the link below and let's get back to the video. I was definitely not expecting these numbers for the latency, especially since the Pico 4 Ultra has the exact same processor as the Quest 3 and 3S, but it does have 50% more RAM, so I guess that's making a pretty big difference in wireless PC VR. The Pico and the Play for Dream are also the only two that have access to the new monster mode in virtual desktop, though I kept all four headsets on godlike just to keep things fair for these tests. Now if you're a PC VR purist, you'll know that the second most important thing when going wireless is compression, and it's why so many people still prefer a wire, so let's talk about how each of these headsets deal with it. Virtual desktop does a lot of sorcery behind the curtain and makes compression way harder to spot, but it is definitely still there compared to a dedicated wired PC VR headset. Despite the differences in resolution and the fact that the Play for Dream MR is a micro OLED headset, I can't say there was a significant difference between all four when it comes to compression. I guess if I'm nitpicking, the Quest 3 and the Play for Dream looked overall the best, but 99% of people couldn't spot the difference between all of them, at least not on the godlike preset. But Monster Mode on the Pico and the Play for Dream looks significantly better and gets rid of pretty much any visible compression. It's pure magic and for that reason, these two win hands down. The Play for Dream is overall higher resolution and micro OLED, so it will look better overall, but I'm not sure if it's three to four times the price better. Probably not though. Okay, let's talk visual sharpness. This one's kind of subjective since I can't reliably show you, but 
I've tested a lot of VR headsets, so I'll walk you through my experience. I've had the Pico 4 Ultra for a while now, and I'm definitely now wondering why I haven't used it more. In terms of sharpness and overall smoothness, it looks and performs great on godlike and excellent in monster mode. But while the displays are extremely good, as good as the lenses are, they're just no match for the ones in the Quest 3 which are still the best I've ever seen. For wireless streaming, this can be both a blessing and a curse because the super sharp edge-to-edge -edge clarity of the Quest 3 will really show any imperfections more than every other headset in this video. So to keep things brief, in terms of lens sharpness, the ranking goes Quest 3, Pico 4 Ultra, Play for Dream MR, and as expected, the Quest 3S is in last place because of the Fresnel lenses. But in terms of streaming sharpness, that monster mode is so damn good, so it's now extremely close between the Quest 3's awesome lenses and the sheer quality of the image in monster mode on the Pico 4 Ultra. Let's go over the results and conclusions, but first I think I know what you might be thinking. What about the Steam frame? Well, I'm in communication with Valve and should be able to get my hands on it early next year, but there's actually a way to test their foveated streaming technology right now to see if it really makes a difference, so let's do that and then I'll go over the full results. Using Steam Link 2.0 on the Play for Dream MR, which has eye tracking, I can actually try out the exact same tech that the Steam Frame will be using. I was not expecting much here, and apologies for the aspect ratio of the recording being a bit off, but the experience in headset absolutely blew me away. Not only did it look incredible, in fact it was as close to wired as I've ever experienced, but here's the shocker. I was running this at 300% resolution in Steam VR. that's double what I was using in the previous tests. And not only that, but I was getting perceivably lower latency. In fact, I wanted to make sure I wasn't going crazy, so I tested both Virtual Desktop and Steam Link 2.0 using the performance graph in Steam VR, just to make sure I was comparing apples to apples. And guess what, I was indeed getting half the latency using double the resolution, so effectively four times the performance. But to finally reach a conclusion, that's actually not the full story. Because while Steam Link 2.0 with foveated streaming on the Play for Dream MR looked and performed considerably better than the other three headsets, the reality is there's more to enjoying wireless PC VR than just visuals and performance. And one aspect where the Play for Dream comes in dead last is controller tracking, so let's take all of that into consideration and see who the winners are. Well, if you're strictly using your VR headset for sim racing or flight sims, then the Play for Dream MR is the easy winner when using it with Steam Link 2.0. It looks incredible, performs extremely well, and is just overall fantastic for these use cases. Now, it is the most expensive by far, and I've even had to get some separate comfort accessories from VR Panda to get it sitting well on my face, so unfortunately I can't declare it the overall winner. So let's talk about the Quest 3, 3S and the Pico 4 Ultra. For overall performance, they're pretty close, but the Pico 4 Ultra edges the Quest 3 and 3S in latency and by quite a bit. In terms of visual quality, the 3S comes in last, strictly because it has only a single LCD panel of low resolution and uses Fresnel lenses. That means it's down to the Meta Quest 3 and the Pico 4 Ultra, and I think you'd be happy with either of them, but if I absolutely had to pick only one, despite having higher latency, I'd go with the Quest 3. Again, they're very close in overall visual fidelity, but the Quest 3's lenses are just unmatched and it even slightly beats the Pico 4 Ultra in controller tracking accuracy. So in conclusion, get the Play for Dream if your budget is pretty much unlimited and you mostly play Sims, get the Quest 3 if you want the overall good at everything headset, or the Pico 4 Ultra if latency is the most important aspect to you. Finally, the Quest 3S really surprised me because it's still a great headset being the cheapest out of the bunch. I hope you found this useful, consider leaving a like or hyping this video if you're watching on your phone and I'll catch you in the next one. Cheers guys!